students, I express the some alternatives which are remaining within the palliative area. In palliative area, we find six periods. In the Cameroon period, you find some alternatives which are available in the C one. What are these? Selfish, trilobites, and sponges. These organisms generally evolve in that period. That is called as Cambrian period. Second period is known as here Ordovician period. In this period, you will find fish, trilobites, and branchiopods. These are noticed in that time. Okay. The next one is the Silurian period. In that period, you find the water scorpion, your small fish, and coral reefs. They would be noticed in that time. And that period is called as Silurian period. Maximum fish would be generated in this time. Then, next period is known as Devonian period. In this period, you find the amphibia, which are modified from the fishes. And you find some quite the group insects which are remaining in the colonial masses. Okay, these organisms should be noticed in that time. That period is known as Devonian period. Then fifth one is called as Carboniferous period. In this period, you can notice some your plants like your tendophytes. Okay, named as the fauns and ostrich. They also be noticed in that time, and reptiles also be arrived in that time. And reptiles are generally called in this field, that is called as Carboniferous. Okay, then you know next about the Permian period. In this period, you find trilobites and the rose corals, they will be evolved in that time. Pelagic era generally generated those animals, which are remaining on the blackboard, and these, general, these animals will be formed in that time. Okay. And this is the Paleozoic era. Let us reveal the Mesozoic era. The Mesozoic era came to the earth after the Paleozoic era. Before the Paleozoic era, find the pre cambrian era. However, after the your Pelagic era, you can know the Mesogic era remain. And that period generally differentiated into three distinct periods. In the era, it comprises three distinct periods. Firstly, you find the Triassic period. Secondly, you find the Jurassic period. And this period is the Jurassic period, the second one. Okay? And third one is the last Cretaceous period. I label these three as periods 1, 2, 3 as a what? Your ascending band. Okay? And this is the your first, second, and third. The Triassic period, Jurassic period and Cretaceous period. Jurassic period is very bad, I don't know period. Okay? And in this period, you find the dinosaurs came to the universe as the dominant animals. Okay? And first of all, you try to understand the Triassic period. In Triassic period, you find some organisms like dinosaurs, Ichatosaurus, and small mammals. Generally, they are equal in that time. Okay? That is called the Triassic period. That is considered as pre Jurassic period. After the Triassic period, the Jurassic period came. In that period, you find some organisms in the universe. They are named as dinosaurs and small mammals like the rodents. Generally, they are noticed in that time. Then, after this period, the next period was known as your Cretaceous period. In this period, dinosaurs is going to be extinct in that time. 
and when organizing came to the world, that is the name that is flowering plants. And there also we commonly call as menorodes. We can differentiate as the two types known as your gymnosperms and angiosperms, and those plants generally arise in that time. Generally, they develop in the universe. Okay. And in this manner, the organisms are distributed in three different periods, which are comes under the Jurassic era. Okay. Please look over the one era that is named as Cenozoic era. In Cenozoic era or Cenozoic era, in this era, you find the your tertiary period, and in tertiary period is the period in which you find the dependent mammals should be evolved. The new mammals should be generally evolved in that time, and that period is known as your tertiary period that remains under the era that is called as Cenozoic era or Cenozoic era. Okay, and the animals should be distributed like this and in different periods as well as different era. Lastly, I explain you about the your era in which you find quaternary period. Lastly, we focus on the point of the your modern era in which you find the quaternary period. In this year, actually Homo sapiens are involved. And Homo sapiens came to the earth surface, and Homo sapiens means human being, it will be came to the world, and that period is known as quaternary period, it will be considered within the modern era. Okay, in this manner, the era comprises three years, and three years comprises epochs, and some organisms generally noticed in that time. And I already described to them in detail. Okay, thank you. Welcome to everybody. Today I will take one class regarding the evolution. Under this contest, I will explain you about the characteristics of the man. Then, side by side, I will show, explain about the evolutionary changes. Okay? First of all, you know evolutionary changes. Evol evolutionary changes generally arising from the your prior to Apeman and Apeman including the prehistoric man then you find the true man which one including the modern man from the Apeman to human and that is nothing that is the evolutionary changes of the man okay and you people know about the evolutionary changes of the man you see, the, in case of the ape men, you mark they are, they are not proper erect posture. But under the process of evolutionary changes of the men, gradual assumption of more erect posture may be arised. Secondly, the forearm, which one initially equivalent with the hind, hind leg, and entire your appendages are equal in size initially in case of the F men but it is going to be deformed in case of the modern men forearm became liberated from the locomotor functions and gradually becomes shutter in size that means shutter arms and perfection of the thumb the opposability the opposable great toe became parallel to the other toes. Development of chin prominence. 
loss of hairs over the body in case of if you mark the entire body is covered with the hairs very few spaces generally hairs are not there all other parts you must find the hairs must be present but that type of profuse hair are not forming in the body of the modern man loss of hairs over the body increase in skull capacity initial skull is not so large skull size is very small it provides a very small space to lodge the brain but the modern man you mark it generally the modern man possesses a large skull and it has the ample space for the lodging of the brain that means the skull size also be increases and its capacity also be increases increases in skull capacity next point increasing the size and complexity of the brain especially the frontal lobe reductions of the muzzle that that means the projection of the head including the nostril and the mouth that is called the muzzle m u z z l e muzzle and the size of the teeth also be what reduced initially they are very well developed but reduction of the size of the teeth in case of the modern man if man has large teeth nextly canine became relatively shorter in size in the modern man and loss of the jaw power in case of the ape man the jaw power is higher in state diminution of the brow rises diminution in the length of the zygomatic temporal arc okay and development of the articulate speech and due to a dividingly of the forest man could not easily obtain his food he had to search for the living and he became hunter due to harsh weather during the long winter he needed the cloth and hence became tree from the climate restriction and then dispersal took place from one habitat to another here i presented 15 characters regarding the evolutionary changes of the man from the ape man now you reveal the characteristic features of the man what are the characters you find in the body of the human being if you reveal to the human being meticulously and minutely you can obtain very peculiar characteristic features what are the characteristic features in there human being are walking here and there by their two part appendages which are called as the hind legs and these are the feet and those feet would be help in the displacement because the organism is bipedal organisms it, it is possible on the part of that person to move from one place to the another place by the help of the foot by the feet or by the two legs the bipedal locomotion generally exhibited by the human being and giving the upright postures okay straightly the human being can displace from one place to the another place that is the upright posture skull is balanced on the upper end of the vertebral column you mark the vertebral column runs in y and y dash axis that means from the anterior to posterior as a straight manner okay and the vertebral column generally hold upwardly to the skull okay and skull is balanced on the upper end of the vertebral column instead of projecting the anteriorly from it then you find another gadel which one is present at the distal part of the trunk at there generally hind limbs are connected and that is nothing that is called as pelvic gadel also be called as the hip gadel and in hip gadel and pelvic gadel you must find very elongated and well differentiated 
ilium bone okay and generally ilium bones are expanded and to form a sort of basin supporting the internal organs of the body cavity okay and ilia are elongated and lack this the supportive function as in the part x okay in case of human being the pelvic girdle forming as a basin like structures and forming a cave that is called as the pelvic cave and in this cave generally the rectum urinary bladder in case of female uterus would be lost okay and ilia are elongated and lack this the supportive function in x okay and nose has the prominent rises in case of the human being and well developed elongated tip and median furo in his upper lip leaves are outrolled so that mucous membrane is visible as a continuous red line presence of chin this one this portion called as the chin the lower margin of the lower jaw extends forward as a chin and high forehead with projecting eyebrow rises and body is relatively hairless less hair must be developed on the body surface and large size of the brain and the brain would be lost within the cranium or called as skull the cranial cavity of the man varies from 900 to 2300 cc thus the normal human brains vary greatly in size next the dental arc is a smoothly rounded and parabola the incisors are small and canines projecting the slightly beyond the level of the other teeth in the apes there is the simen gap or diastema but in case of the herbivorous animal you must find the diastema is a well differentiated that means in between the your canines and premolar there is no gap in, usually in case of the carnivorous animal and can canine and also in case of the incisors there is no other gaps and it is compactly remain in case of the carnivorous animal but in herbivorous you mark the here a place would be developed in between the incisors as well as the premolars and that gap is called as diastema due to inabsence of the canines in there that is called as diastema and diastema is well visible in that in there but here you find the diastema is a little bit and that is specifically called as in the term of your simian gap called as the simian gap simian s i m i a n simian gap between the incisor teeth and the canine tooth in each side of the upper jaw you must find that gap but the in the lower you must find the canine tooth present the canine tooth of the lower jaw fits into the space at where the mouth is closed and that space no doubt is called as the simian gap okay and simian gap is the lacking in case of the homo sapiens or modern man and is the pedasus it is called as the proconsulus the tooth row in man is short as compared to that of the apes and some of the earliest your hominids the longer tooth row causes the face to protrude into the sort of the muzzle okay and lastly i shall explain you very long period of the postnatal growth must be seen in the in case of human being in case of the human being there is no simian gap there is no diastema and you must find the canines but in case of a 
the lower jaw provides the canines upper jaw has no canines and there you find the gaps in which the lower canines can fit in there and that place of the upper jaw in which that space would be developed in between the canines and also incisors and that space is known as the per gap okay thank you here